All right, so welcome back to the Perpetua podcast. So this week we have Kate Flynn in. Kate Flynn is part of our front face team as well as one of our rhythm ride instructors here at Perpetua. Big part of the furniture for a long time around here. Um, mm. So welcome, Kate, to the podcast. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Really, very good. So I guess might as well start off at sort of how you how you got into Perpetua, how you started working in Perpetua. How did that all come about? Um, honestly, I started working to in Perpetua because I didn't want to pay for classes anymore. Okay. <laughs> I was in sixth year of school, so it was ages ago. And me and Eve, who is now a general manager, which is a very full circle moment, um, w- she and I started coming to classes together, loved it, kept us sane during the Leaving Cert. And, and this then is me, who you're in school with. At the yes. Time. Yeah. And then um, she got a job during the summer, and I, yeah, I wanted to keep coming, but didn't want to pay for classes because I was very broke and a student and needed a part-time job and got a job front of house as well. And yeah, then it was just kind of snowballed from there. Sure thing. And then so what sort of at the time when you were coming to those classes before you joined to work, what sort of were your favorite classes to do? I loved everything. I was definitely always into ride. Like that was by far my favorite always. But yeah, I did. I loved Tread and Tread. I actually did a lot of them as well. Okay. But sort of tilted towards uh, rhythm ride, ride from yeah. the start. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and Always. then how did you find that sort of transition then as you went into college and started working front of house? How did that sort of embed into your lifestyle then and sort of get to know everyone in here? Um, I mean, it was easier. It was fine. Like, balancing college and work was easy um, because it was only part-time. And sure. I was coming into the gym. I mean, I, honestly, from the second I started working here, it, it's, I can't describe it. I feel like if you know Perpetua, you know what I'm talking about and you don't really, it's hard to understand unless you actually come into the building, but we're like a family, like it's such a community um, energy wise. And that was the exact same four and a half years ago when I first started working here. So it was like, I already knew everyone, even though I hadn't even barely met half of them. And um, yeah, me and Eve just like fell into it and loved it so much. So I was probably here more than I was. Oh, I was no, sorry. I was definitely here more than I was in college just because I loved it between work and then doing classes and just making so many friends through front of house and through the gym. Yeah, it's been, it was, it was so much fun. Okay, very good. And then I suppose talk to me a little bit about how that sort of natural progression goes from, I suppose a lot of our front of house staff sort of end up then dipping their toes into coaching mm-hmm. and then sort of go end up going yeah. sort of full on with coaching. How did that sort of all come about and how did that idea come to fruition? Um, okay, when I first started working front of house, I knew at the back of my head I always wanted to be a ride instructor, but I never really thought I would. I think it was kind of like a pipeline dream that I was like, oh, I'd love to say I Someday. could do that, but I don't even think I ever said it out loud because I just never thought I would. Okay. And then auditions came about I want to say like a year into me working front of house and I probably had done god knows how many classes at that stage probably at least one every other day um for the past year and so I was obsessed and yeah auditions came about and my manager at the time said like I think she just came to me and was like would you ever consider auditioning and I was like, yeah, I've always considered auditioning. I just never thought I ever mm-hmm. would. And then Neve really pushed me to do it. And Karina pushed me to do it and did it. And I actually have the worst memory. So I honestly can't remember how it went. But okay. it must have gone well if sure. they kept me going and trained me up. <laughs> and desperate at the time. Oh, hilarious. Um, but yeah, so it was it was, it was was really fun. And she did a good bit of training. And my first class was at actually the day before we finished or closed for lockdown so I just just got into the podium and then we closed for lockdown so then I took yeah I mean the gym closed so I couldn't coach or anything absolutely and then was it a long time from sort of that initial idea of maybe okay I'm gonna I'm gonna try out for this to then getting on that podium for the first time how's that sort of process like in terms of training and stuff yeah so training um I think it's changed a lot now, but when I did it, it was, we did days of training and um, anyone that was training to become a writing instructor, we would all meet and get trained up by our old manager at the time. Um, and we just went through drills. We did a lot of practice on the podium, coaching for each other or to each other. And um, yeah, just honestly, just bike time, like time on that bike is sure. like your best friend and then yeah. time getting used to coaching people yeah. and like the language being used and how to approach it and programming music 
everything to do with that. Sure thing. And yeah, I suppose touching on that point then of the music and stuff, how do you, I know a big part of the Rhythm Ride classes are the sort of music mm. aspect and building out yeah. those playlists and sort of attacking it from that set. Yeah. Sort of how do you go about that from a day to day sort of thing? I think we all probably approach it very differently. Okay. I have, my Spotify is just like my holy grail. <laughs> <laughs> if I lost that, I don't know what I'd do. But I have so many different folders. If you go onto my Spotify, it, it looks chaotic because from an outsider, from the public's perspective, it's not in folders, but sure. it's all organized, organized very nicely mind, sort of. um, for me. But I have different folders for different BPMs. So each track, depending whether we're doing like a heavy, slow climb, will be a lower BPM versus if we're doing like a fast double time run, it'll be a high BPM. So I have my entire Spotify basically um, broken up into playlists per PBM. So I have like B playlists, probably like 200 playlists, if okay. not more. Um, and yeah, it takes a while. Some days are easier than others to make playlists. I try and make a new playlist for every single class um, for my own sanity more so because I just can't listen to the same mm. songs over and over again unless I'm hyper fixated on it. But yeah, yeah, so it takes, it depends creativity if it's flowing or not, but most of the time it's, it's, it's such a fun process to do. Very good. And then how is your, since obviously you had to then take that break from getting on that podium for the first time mm. coming back after COVID then, how has your sort of teaching style at all changed or have you sort of developed as time's gone on mm. probably over the last two years, is it, since you sort of really st yeah. got stuck into coaching and, you know, now you're sort of four or five classes a week here, yeah. et cetera. So sort of they add up quite quickly, I suppose. Yeah. Um, how do you feel like, do you feel like you're a much different coach from when you started oh. out? Do you feel like you're a much <laughs> better coach, a worse coach? Um, I would say different, definitely. Okay. I think I've changed so much as a coach. I have done a lot of classes in other cities like London, New York, and I've taken and learned so much from them, sure. um, which has been so helpful. And then just applied it and kind of made it my own. But I think, yeah, I think just getting exposure to different styles of rhythm ride is so important when you're coaching and sort of pulling inspiration from those yeah, studios and, and you just learn that. so much from other coaches like even just within these four walls like going to other coaches classes mm. like going to Maya's or D's or Karina's like you learn so much from each other and I think it's impossible to say you left a class and didn't pick up or learn something new from someone else so yeah that's really helped me grow as a coach and then I think just confidence it takes time, but confidence often on the bike is so important to captivate a room full of people. And I think, yeah, in the past two years, that's enhanced a lot, which is great. But yeah. Okay, very good. And then I suppose Perpetua put definitely a big emphasis on sort of training their coaches mm. all the time and sort of staying on top of that. I know recently you were away in London yeah, for a little day of training so and you had... Uh, sort of cool guest trainer in during the week for a mm -hmm. lot of training sort of talk to me a little about that and how enjoyable that's all been so the london trip was a <laughs> it was chaotic because our flight got cancelled so we got stuck there but okay. it was so much fun we really had the best time mm. we went to Cortland's class uh, in cycle in clapham and then we went to alana's in cycle in oxford circus and it was both classes were just beyond insane it was the best energy and it was also just special being there with the whole team um great bonding experience and then this week we had zach come over from new york who is like world renowned in the indoor cycling world and he took us through three days <laughs> of really hardcore training but we learned so much and it was just great to get feedback from someone who's so much experience. Like he's, I think, 14 years under his belt, okay. um, which is just insanity. So, yeah, it was so cool to be called out on and picked up on um, different things we do and different things we can change and improve mm. on. But there's always, 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 always rooms yeah, absolutely. to improve. Yeah, sure yeah. thing. And then do you see yourself coaching for a long time going forward or how do you think yeah. that'll change? Do you think it'll always be sort of as then you move out of college and into whatever mm. sort of job you take on. Yeah. You see sort of coaching staying 100%. part of your life. I think if I stopped coaching, it would be like I lost like my left arm. Like <laughs> I just <laughs> don't know what I do with myself. I get more, I like it fills my cup up so, so much. And 
I honestly important for the cup to be full. Inc- important for the cup to be full, so and I think I get more. I honestly think I get more enjoyment out of coaching b- versus taking classes. Um, okay. I I just love it. it. There's something so special about mm. being a coach and being able to take people on a journey throughout 45 minutes in a dark studio with your favorite songs blasting. It's just so cool and. Yeah, I honestly, I will do it for as long as I physically possibly can. <laughs> sure. And then I suppose moving sort of on from that in terms of the sort of community aspect that you've built in Rhythm Ride here in Perpetua, mm-hmm. which is quite strong. You sort of built a community outside then of Perpetua yeah. through uh, a run club, Happy <laughs> Feet. So talk to me a little bit about that and how that sort of how that sort of got moving yeah. about a year ago. So it started, it only started in August. Okay. So it's so still a baby. Still a baby. Um, kind of just snowballed. It started me and Kira McNulty, who's a very good friend of mine. We went traveling during the summer to Lisbon to meet up with um some girls from Australia that were doing a Euro summer, okay. and one of them has a run club. And basically, yeah, Sophie just inspired us. She's an amazing run club called So So's in Brisbane, and she inspired us to start our own. We kind of put a pin in it. Didn't speak about it for like a month after coming back to Lisbon and then we I texted Kira just one random Wednesday being like I really want to do that run club do you want to start it and she was like yeah <laughs> and then I think she came into Petua that evening and we just made an Instagram made the graphics had the run that Saturday and like 30 people showed up we and like we we were so confused because we were like why, <laughs> why are people why is anyone turning up yeah. yeah and then can I swear on this yeah. okay <laughs> um yeah so we were like why are people showing up we thought it was just gonna be friends and then and then it just snowballed. Yeah, the next run, I think 60 people came. The next run, 80 people. And we, it was like, what the fuck is going on? But yeah. it was it was really cool. Yeah, it's been the biggest whirlwind. And enjoyable process, I'm sure. Yes. And sort of getting to know not a lot of new people yes. through that, you know, or is there a lot of sort of familiar faces from um, other aspects of your life popping into it? Or is it all sort of new faces? And how have you found people joining it? Are they sort of joining through the Instagram stuff? Are they coming because friends were coming? How is that sort of community built? I think social media is the most amazing thing in so many ways. And one of them is it brings people together and it definitely has for Happy Feet. I think having that community on Instagram has helped people um, find out about it and as well as word of mouth, definitely through friends. But I think so many people um, repost and tag us, which is so amazing. And yeah, it just helps build the community even more. A lot of friendly faces, but also a lot of new faces. And I've met so many friends through it, which Mm. is such a cool thing to say, because I think the main reason why we started Happy Feet was me and Kira had been running together that summer already. And we wanted to run with more people, but we didn't really know how to go about it. And then when Sophie talked to to us about so-sos, we were like, that's such an amazing idea. And we wanted it to be a social run club. We wanted everyone to be able to come whether they are walking running coming just for the coffee after we wanted it to be a social thing not really and performance focused. related yeah sort of like thing. we didn't yeah. care about paces it wasn't about hitting pbs it was literally just about going out meeting people and getting some sort of movement in sure if that's what you felt like doing that day um yeah and then it's and i, I feel like also in your 20s it's so hard to meet people and make new friends mm. when it doesn't surround drinking Absolutely, um, yeah. Or like college or work. There's just not that many spaces in Dublin outside those three options for okay. it. And we wanted to create something. And yeah, it just worked, I guess. Sure. And then I suppose as you were sort of beginning Happy Feet at the time, mm. you sort of fell in. You were signed up for the Dublin Marathon oh, yeah. last <laughs> October. And sort of so how did that come about? You sort of signed up for that the year before, I'm guessing. Yeah, Craig Lawless's fault, actually. Okay, (laughs) as usual. (laughs) As usual, he was signing up for it and I told him it was on my bucket list to do one. And I'd been saying this since I was probably like 16. If you know me back in school, I would have said it probably to you. But I wanted to at some point run a marathon. And he was signing up and he was like, why don't you just do it? And I was like, yeah, fuck it, whatever, I'll do it. If I get it, if I get a spot, I'll do it. Never thought I'd get a spot. And then when I got a spot, I was like shit i like actually have to <laughs> do it now so i put it yeah. off for months didn't start training for months and then june came about and i was like if i needed if i'm gonna do this i need to start training because yeah. i'm six months out so kira started coming on runs with me and that's okay. how we started running together and then yeah and then i got injured for a little bit i had a really bad hip um so i couldn't train for like the guts of like I'd say like six weeks. Was well, excuses popping through? Sure. It says really. Do we want to get there? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but so how did you manage that training then through that sort of hip injury and uh, then a physio. whatever else was popping up okay so much physio physio was great um i went to dynamics just across the road and nile was so amazing it helped me heal my hip um and i think it was just i went did too many miles because i have the fitness there for from on the bike ride, and stuff but absolutely. my legs just didn't have the mileage yeah. in it so took it a little bit too far and got injured and then slowly made myself worked myself back up and yeah then the marathon came about and how did that all go that was <laughs> it a was fun good weekend. it was very fun it okay. was it was it was really, really I th- it was surprising i think i didn't train as hard as i could have i marathon don't come to me for marathon advice because i really <laughs> <laughs> the way i trained was appalling i i think i had like 10 weeks and two of those weeks i was away so I think I did like one run so really I had like eight weeks of training and I think it was probably not the best way of doing it but it worked I didn't do tempo runs didn't do interval runs I just really prioritized getting my lawn run in and happy feet 5k and then the rest I just left it up to spinning and hoped for the best I think I wasn't going in and doing a marathon to hit a pb or to hit a certain pace or hit a certain time i genuinely told everyone I just wanted to complete it mm. and get over the finish line whether I walked and had to stop halfway through or not I just didn't care and I think that helped me have so much fun with it as well and not having the pressure behind it it meant that it was just such a fun experience and then I also ended up doing <laughs> way better than I thought I did okay that always helps yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. and I suppose it's good endorsement then for the the fitness that ride builds yeah. you know if you're not putting a huge amount of miles on the feet and yeah. if ride can really obviously help in a big way yeah I think I underestimated how much ride was gonna help mm. I yeah I kind of had like an oh shit moment on the way to the marathon and Ali brought me down to earth and was like you have done so much spin and I was like I know but like I just don't <laughs> think it's gonna stand to me and it actually did yeah. and now yeah I think because it's such a different type of cardio I always thought it would be so different but yeah yeah it definitely stands okay to you. and it's great because it's low impact so mm. it easy on the body yeah it's yeah good to switch it up. relatively easy on the body mm. yeah mm. they're tough <laughs> <laughs> and then so is the marathon one and done or is there more to go will you do another uh, one i have uh, <laughs> i was clearly on a post-marathon high when i signed up for <laughs> it because i swore i was never gonna do another one again and then i must have been still on have endorphins in me when i signed up for paris sure. which is in april okay so yeah i yeah getting close <laughs> how's prep going for that good um prep Again, don't come to me for marathon okay. advice. I have, n- I'm literally the worst person in the world to go off, but I was kind of had to take a little hiatus from exercise for about two weeks. And I just gotten into marathon training two weeks before that. So yeah, we're going to see how it goes. I okay. don't think I'll do as well as I did last time. Really? But it's fine. Again, I'm not putting pressure on myself. And mm. we'll see. We'll see. How doing it for a, a good weekend in Paris, I suppose. Yeah. Happy. A good excuse good to excuse. get away. Absolutely. And then I suppose we'll touch a bit on obviously Kate Flynn synonymous mm. with the hello, hello tagline on oh. TikTok <laughs> and sort of growing a, a small following on there. And yeah. talk to me about how that sort of came about and what got you to start sort of vlogging on TikTok and sharing a good bit of your life on there. Again, I have the memory of the goldfish. But so I don't actually know why I just woke up one day and decided to post a vlog, okay. but I did. And how long ago would that have been? Oh, like, uh, I think it was like August. 2022 okay maybe i think i've been doing it like nearly two years two years okay i think i don't know yeah good chunk of time good chunk of time like yeah i think it was that long and then yeah i just woke up and just was like oh i want to vlog my day i think i was just obsessed with vlogs i always have been obsessed with like youtube vlogs and then when tiktok came about tiktok vlogs Mm. and I just thought it was such a fun way of documenting your day and I love having things to look back on, like memories. Absolutely. Yeah. I love photos. I love taking videos. I already took photos and videos of my life so much and I just thought it'd be fun to post it for friends and yeah, that's what I did and I don't know, it just kind of has been fun. Yeah. You know, and how, how's that gone in terms of like, I know you've met a few people, a few good friends have yeah. come from it, funnily I'm enough. Quinn. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I met Ali through there, which is bizarre i feel like everyone thinks we've been friends for years but we've literally been friends since like 
not last October, the October before. And we okay. went through TikTok and yeah, I think it's, again, social media is so great. I've met so many amazing people through it, so many great friends through it and so thankful. Thank you, TikTok, for introducing okay. me. To yeah, <laughs> sure thing. And I suppose a very nice thing to be able to look back on yeah. days gone by and how things have changed, you know? Yeah, it's so cool. Um, and I also think it's great for exposure for Happy Feet, like sure. people, just more platforms, people getting mm. to know about that and then also ride like I think it's it's really cool when people come into my class and be like oh I found you through TikTok okay that's why I'm here I love when people say that to me um, sure. so yeah yeah it's been it's okay been fun. and then how does that sort of embed in your future then do you want to sort of keep doing that stuff would you like to try and become a bit bigger on TikTok and what um, would you like to do in that regard or is it just sort of something that you like keeping on the side and it's yeah, more of a hobby than anything I think I just I don't think I would do it if I didn't love it I kind of just do it for fun okay. if it became something amazing but I really have no expectations around it and I'm very much doing it for myself and I really like mm. doing it that way um I don't know if I made it into a career I don't know I just don't want to take something take the that fun I out of it sort of yeah of it. yeah so I don't know we'll see how it goes but at the moment definitely keep doing it just because yeah it's so much fun okay yeah, absolutely. And then you sort of get to work with a few brands at the moment and stuff. Yeah, That's sort of fun. Yeah. Getting stuck into that aspect yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. I've worked with a couple. Um, nothing too serious, but yeah, it's 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 great. It's great. It's, it's mm. really fun. Yeah. Okay, very good. And then I suppose to finish up, talk a bit about sort of any big plans or goals coming up. Mm. What's next in Kay Flynn's <laughs> life? Um, yeah. So I'm traveling to Australia in June, which is very nice. Really exciting. Um. I feel like, yeah, I'm really going out of the box as an Irish person to go to Australia. Yeah, yeah. It's really uncommon. Big difference. Huge. Uh, nice and original. Yeah, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how I get on. I'm, okay. I'm very excited. What's the plan for moving over there? How long? Whereabouts? Is Honestly, there a plan? you probably know as much as I do. Okay. <laughs> I play it by ear. Play it by ear. Yeah. yeah definitely going to coach. The plan is to coach. There's some really great cycling studios in Sydney, and that's okay. where I'm going. So... Hopefully, coach, keep that up. Um, so then when I come back here, I will be ready to get back, <laughs> stuck back into it. Yeah, and a bit more experience. A bit more experience, don't want to lose Different that. studios and stuff. Different yeah. studios, okay. yeah, yeah. Just, just keep it going. And it's also, I think, I've learned from working in a gym, I think I've learned that it's such a great way, if you're in any other city or moving somewhere or just traveling, it's such a great way of meeting people. Mm. And yeah, I think that'll be the first place I go is to a gym to make friends. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find some friends in there. And yeah. And then hopefully. Part of their furniture. Never leave, maybe. Never leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be back. Don't worry. <laughs> Absolutely. Alrighty. So, okay, that was fun. Yeah. Thanks for thanks coming for on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. No worries.